Okay, so I'm Sulema Gonzalez. Um, I teach at Brazil Newcomer High School in Oakland, California. And today I'm gonna to share with you some of my tips on how I created community connections um, this year and last year to support Globe Work. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning um, when creating our Globe project. Um, I always think about a real world problem that I want my students to investigate. Um, I'm always looking for something that my students are interested in. It's very important for me to know that like my students are interested in it because Globe is kind of an expensive pro project as you all know. Um, they have to collect data, they have to analyze the data, create a research project, and then present that data. So it's important for me to know that my students are invested in the project as much as I'm invested in the project. And for me, it's as simple as, like this year, for example, I just gave student post-its, and I was like, okay, what do you want to know? And of course, I provide guidelines, like I break it down to atmosphere, hydrosphere, but um, I, just want, I just want to see what, what they want out of um, GLOBE. And in our school specifically, I made it into like an internship type of thing. So students choose to be in the class. Um, and then I, I, also, I also always think about like, how does this apply to their everyday life? What is it that they want to know? And how does it apply to their everyday life? And then what connections are actually available to support um, their work in GLOBE? Um, so there's no magic formula on how I make these connections. I know a lot of people always ask me like, okay, how did you make this collaboration? But I don't have an actual magic formula. Sometimes all it takes is an email to a random person you found on Google. Um, I know at our school specifically, we're next to UC Berkeley um, and I'm a UC Berkeley alum. So most of the time I'm cold emailing like an entire department. And then most of the time they'll refer you to, to the person that you need. So these are kind of some of the tips that I use when connect, um, making these connections. So I always give them our student population. Um, for us, for my school specifically, it's a high school. My students are newcomers. So all of my students are IRA that coming from Guatemala, Honduras, or Mexico. And so it's important for me to let them know that my students, like English is not their first language. So most of the time I'm looking for bilingual speakers or speakers that know that I'm gonna be translating most of the information. Um, and this is very important because one time when I was making a connection with SF State University, um, I was telling them about the student population and then they referred me to someone else who actually worked with newcomers. So that's kind of how I continue to build that network. And then I provide them with our research. So for this year specifically, um, my students looked into aerosol measurements in Oakland, California, and they compared that to their home country in Guatemala or Honduras, and then they examined the health effects. So I know I haven't mentioned it, but I teach um, biology at my school, but with a health context. So I also like anatomy. Um, so I wanted the health part involved in the GLOBE project. And then I think of how they can support. So most of the time I provide them with ways that I'm looking for them to support because I have some sort of purpose. Um, or I also let them um, tell me how they think they can support. And I'll talk about, a little bit about that in the next in this slide. So this is kind of my timeline for this year. Um, I started off with my NASA data and I actually didn't do the presentation on my NASA data. Tracy came and she did the presentation. And I like that she did it because for some reason, students love hearing information. I've said like three times, they like hearing it from someone else. Um, and so they were very invested when Tracy was able to give the, the my NASA data, they were able to look at their home country data and then they were able to compare it to our data and then from there um, I also had um, I also was able to get a zoom call with a NASA scientist so from two years ago I believe she actually gave a presentation um, and I connected with her at that presentation and then I had her come into my class last oh I had her zoom with my class last year and then this year I also had her zoom and she was able to speak Spanish to my students so she knew, she knew like my student's population. And then I had told her that we had already done a my NASA data presentation with Tracy. So she was able to add more um, information about that with my students. So my students were actually very interested. Um, I actually had certain students who, because my GLOBE class was on Wednesdays only. So I had certain students who wouldn't come to class on other days, but would just come on Wednesdays for the internship class. So it was actually very exciting to see that they were interested in hearing um, from other people. So 
since my students have the collection of data down, um, I need, I, my students are newcomers and since English is not their first language, I thought, okay, so they're gonna have to present this data at some point and I need them to know how to present it. I don't need, I can't have them be shy once the moment comes that they're gonna present. So I was able to get um, a public speaker and he was a first generation um, student. So he was able to provide stu my students with ways on how they can do like an elevator pitch. They were able to work together. And it was very exciting because I was able to see my students kind of um, be able to communicate all that information that they learned. They were able to actually communicate it to someone else. And then COVID happened and I was like, okay, all of this, all of this globe work we've done and we're not gonna be able to do anything. So it was very hard because in our school specifically, I wasn't just meeting with globe students, I was meeting with the entire school. So I couldn't necessarily work on stuff we had done at in globe. But I thought back to my original question of like, what do I want them to learn out of this? And since they were able to, since they learned how to collect the data, they were able to analyze it, they were able to talk to someone on how to communicate that data. I thought, okay, what they didn't learn were the health effects. And given COVID happened, everyone was sheltered in place, or mostly everyone was sheltered in place. Um, you know, atmosphere change, pollution rates change. So I wanted students to learn, okay, how does that affect health? And so I was able to connect with a doctor we had previously been working on. And I told her what I wanted. I wanted I want students to learn about how is it's affecting health, how the change in air quality. And so we were able to get a respiratory therapist um, to come and talk to the student. But that one respiratory therapist ended up talking to other people and he was able to bring six doctors in that same one Zoom call. Um, and so I had six, seven, seven healthcare workers and one Zoom call. And then I had another respiratory therapist come in at the second Zoom call the following week. And as many of you know, a lot of students were not logging in in our calls, but when I, when I told them that we would have healthcare workers coming in, talking to them about certain health issues and how everything was changing with COVID, all the students were interested. And so these are some of the pictures um, of some of those connections that were made. The one on the right um, is we were at a simulation lab during the school year, but that same, those same connections that we made were the same connections that were able to come in and do the Zoom calls. So moving forward, I think I'm still gonna include that because we're not sure we're gonna be going in person, but um, I think creating connections with the community is very important because students become more interested, they're exposed to different careers and they get a lot of experience out of it. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my gosh, those pictures look awesome. They look like engaging fun. Did you have um, written resources in multiple or in English and Spanish for your students as well? Yes. So when making these connections sometimes, for example, when I made the connection with the NASA scientist, um, she, I gave her what we were doing in class. And so she was actually able to change one of the NASA resources online on um, the GLOBE website. And she was able to change it to fit our students' needs. So that was great. Awesome. And just to be clear, when I was with the students, I don't speak a lick of Spanish, <laughs> but it was really good because they, they're getting that technical vocabulary, which I think is good in uh, their own personal growth to understand that technical vocabulary and that transition between Spanish and English. And Zulema was right there to fill in the blanks kind of stuff whenever, whenever the students needed that. So I really appreciated that synergy there of, of um, focusing on those, those vocab, those technical vocab 